Today we are going to be going over some bird watching in the Niagara region. And to start off here, we have a table of contents. Uh, the first thing we'll be going over is the introduction, which is some background and birding in Niagara region. And we'll also give you guys some tips for bird watching. The second thing that we'll be going over are some benefits of um, doing this activity. Uh, some adaptability to circumstances and how you can do uh, bird watching from indoors. The third thing we will be going over is why do birds matter? And we'll be sharing some of the threats and we'll also give you guys some more resources to check out. So what is bird watching? Bird watching is also known as birding. And this is the practice of observing birds in their natural habitat. Um, as a hobby. So a bird watcher may observe using their naked eye, using a visual enhancement device like binoculars or a telescope. Um, you can also listen for bird sounds or watch public webcams. And this is a nice quote that we found um, from Lynn Thompson. It says, the most important quality in a bird watcher is the willingness to stand quietly and see what comes. Our everyday lives obscure a truth about existence, that at the heart of everything, there lies a stillness and a light. Okay, our introduction. So some background about the birds. Um, initially, birds uh, were simply hunted for food, but in the mid 1800s, the study of birds was increased. The first recorded use of the term bird watcher was in 1891. The bird was introduced as a verb in 1918. The term birding was also used for the practice of fowling or hunting with firearms, as in Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor. In 1996, the entire Niagara River corridor stretched 56 kilometers from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario, which became the first site in North America to receive international recognition as a globally significant important bird area by influential conservation groups in both Canada and the US. And there's over 170 species of birds that have been found in Duffer Islands in Niagara Falls. So here we have a picture of birds flying beside Niagara Falls and knowing when and where to find and photograph wild birds in Niagara Falls was a mystery for many generations. The introduction of eBirds by Cornell University in 2000 to change that. It is now possible for anyone to keep a live list of their bird sightings and explore other observations in the area. So birding in Niagara region. There are more than 300 species of birds to be seen in Ontario, but many of these are mostly in the Niagara region. There are a variety of places that could be checked out for a great birding experience. And whether you plan on joining a club or you head out on your own, there are a few things that you should consider taking with you if you wanna have the full experience. Um, you wanna wear weather appropriate clothing, um, some good walking shoes or boots, nothing really open toed. You wanna make sure you have some bug spray, maybe a hat, and some sunscreen and a refillable water bottle, um, maybe a notebook and pen if you wanna draw or write about the sightings that you see, and sometimes a trash bag, which would be great, you know, to help clean up our environment. Um, so yes, these are some of the things that we would recommend for you guys. So here are some birding hotspots. In Short Hills Provincial Park, we can check out this website for more information about the location. Uh, Malcolmson Eco Park, another one is the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Area or the Niagara Botanical Gardens in Lake Ontario and Lake Erie shorelines, and of course, Niagara River. Um, these are all great spots where 
they're commonly known to see like a large uh, species of birds. So year round bird watching in Niagara Falls. In summer, here are some of the birds that we can see around this time, the, the great egrets and black crowned, um, the night herons can be seen feeding their young in the summer. In fall and winter, um, the rich waters are inviting to a vast number of ducks and gulls. In spring, we can see some swallows, sparrows, flycatchers, um, rose-breasted grouse beaks. And here we have some pictures of the different kinds of birds that you'll see in every season. So where do birds migrate to? Most birds head, head further south in the fall unless they can find the right type of food to survive for the winter. So it may be surprising that Niagara Falls is a popular destination for birds. And in spring and summer, they usually go north to Lake Ontario, Canada. And in the fall and winter, like we mentioned, they go south to the Niagara Falls, kind of more on the US side. And here on the right, we have a picture just to kind of show you guys um, where Lake Ontario is and Niagara Falls. So here's a little background about the migration period. So as we can see up here, we have the months and then we separated um, the birds by group. So group one, two, three. Group one is seen um, birds fly south during winter due to the lack of food. So that's around um, January to about April. And then group two, they return to the north during warmer temperatures in order to do some breeding, which is seen around May, uh, October, once it's starting to get a little bit warmer. And then group three, you they migrate um, back to the south to avoid rainstorms. And again, they they aren't able to get access to a lot of food. So that's why they fly south. And then that is again seen around October through December. Okay, so some migratory birds in Canada. So here we have a table where um, we compare three different birds that are mostly seen throughout the Niagara uh, Falls area. And then on the purple, we have the spring and then for the blue, we have winter. So the American crow, there's about little change in population and there are short distance migrants. The bald eagle in the center, there's a large increase in population and they're also a short distance migrant. And then on the left, we have the Canada goose. They are also short distance migrants. And then we can again see that big increase from spring and winter. Okay, so um, some of the things that we wanted to go over was like preventing, um, consider reusing uh, reusable bottles, cups, bags, utensil sets to reduce your plastic foot footprint and decrease pollution. Um, migratory, you can help birds during critical migration periods by turning off all non-essential lights in your home from 11 p.m. to sunrise. And some of the problems is you can support the laws that migratory birds can't live without. So some tips for birding. Um, one of the few tips is try your best to be quiet. If you can minimize your noise, you can get much closer to a bird. Um, avoid sudden movements. If you get closer to a bird, that means moving very slowly and deliberately. You don't wanna scare off the bird. And also another great tip is being patient. So a sparrow hopping around in a bush will eventually move into a spot where you can get a good look. So we just um, wanna emphasize like trying not to get impatient with the bird because they are in their habitat. So whatever they're doing, you know, that's kind of their space. And obviously they wanna explore, or they're looking for food or even a place to sleep. So kind of just waiting for that moment where you can get a great view of them um, is a great tip. Another thing is avoid brightly colored clothes. So if you can wear dark colors or even earth tones like blues, uh, dark green, stuff like that, you can kind of blend in more with the background. So then um, maybe they can even come closer to you and you'll get a better look at them. 
So the second thing that we're gonna be going over are the benefits of bird watching. So the good thing about bird watching is that it's very adaptable to different circumstances that people have. Older adults can enjoy birding no matter what their level of mobility may be. Some examples of this, we mean by you can rearrange your room with either a reclining chair or a bed near a window, and you can add a bird feeder, which is visible from that window, and you can watch the birds flock to your view. Maybe if you have a balcony, you can also create like a small little garden with plants um, to attract any native birds in your area. And also wheelchair bound older adults can enjoy bird watching um, by going to, on uh, wheelchair accessible strolls in their neighborhood. So maybe if you have a small park or even just around your neighborhood where there's a lot of trees and you'd like to go ahead and go out there and take a look at birds, that's also a nice thing to do. And for uh, seniors who are fully mobile, bird watching can offer light to moderate um, exercise and cater to different levels of exercise. So if you go to the park, I mean, that's a great short walk or long walk. Um, if you like to go hiking, maybe that's another option that you can do, get a little bit more exercise. But the, the nice thing about this is that it's adaptable to whatever circumstances you're under. So this also helps decrease anxiety and stress. So spending some time in nature is inherently calming, um, which is a nice thing. And it also reminds you to kind of be in the moment, which is a nice mental state achieved by focusing on the present moment that you're in. It means calming, calmly acknowledging and accepting without any judgment of your feelings, thoughts, or any bodily sensation. The patience that bird watching requires only serves to enhance this um, meditation, which is great. Um, the exercise benefit that comes from walking outdoors, like I mentioned, also um, can increase your level of happiness and your energy. And birding can help your loved ones connect with themselves, with others, and nature as a whole. So like I mentioned, that birding is very adaptable. You can get your friends, you can get your family members to go outside with you, and um, you guys can really connect. You never know, you might have um, a nice conversation while on your walk or even just going outdoors. So this also offers multiple cognitive benefits and bird watching um, offers a range of sensory stimulation and memory exercise for older adults. Some examples of this is observing small visual details, noticing patterns in animal behavior and listening closely to bird songs all help to engage um, your brain, which is a great thing. These memory related tasks enhance older adults reflex skills, mental alertness, and can even benefit uh, from dementia. The Alzheimer's Association suggests that if we want to keep our brains healthy, we need to keep learning new things. And if you are new to bird watching, just identifying the birds, you can be a uh, challenge. Like it's like a mental puzzle. You don't have to go outside. You can do birding indoors from the comfort of your home. And one of the most crucial aspects of indoor birding is the most simple one, which is find a place that provides a good view of the outdoors. This view can include trees, tall grasses, shrubs, wildflowers, and other natural elements that attract birds in an ideal situation. And once you have found a suitable location for yourself, you can get yourself comfortable. You can grab some pillows, maybe blankets, snacks, um, a notebook if you want, or even binoculars just to get a better view. And another thing to emphasize is that patience is key in bird watching. If you are determined to birding, you must know that there is sometimes nothing much to do other than to watch and wait. This can be challenging if you're eager to see birds, if you're excited to make a new discovery, but in reality, it's worth the wait. Okay, and the Center for Health and Environmental Science says that 
Birding has the benefit of being a hobby that due to the increasing availability of online bird identification guides and smartphone apps, they can be enjoyed with relatively little financial cost. You don't have to get the full birding experience by buying binoculars or, you know, buying some other devices. You can just do it with your eyes or um, even now there's a lot of apps or videos online where you can see birds, which is a really nice thing to do. And the next thing we'll be going over is why do birds matter? So birds are one of Canada's most watched and beloved wildlife species. In fields and forests, along rivers and coastlines, in city parks, and even in our backyards, billions of individual birds representing 451 species inhabit the skies and wild spaces of Canada. So some of the threats that birds constantly are facing are climate change, deforestation and habitat loss, a decrease in insect prey number, pesticides and toxic chemicals. There are also diseases and death resulting from man-made obstacles. And as a result of these threats, nearly 20% of native bird species are at risk of extinction. Okay, so now we'll move on to our conclusion. So how can we support the birds? Thankfully, there are many different ways that we can support birds. And the first things that we'll be going over is some simple things that can um, have a positive impact on the birds. And the first one is keeping any pet cats indoors. Uh, another thing that you can do is install birdhouses um, to protect birds from hitting the windows of your home. Um, when they see bright lights in the middle of the night, they might get confused or, you know, for whatever reason, they want to fly into it and they can crash into your windows or doors. And we can also help by reduce um, declining populations. So while a clean bird bath can provide a fresh source of drinking water. So if you um, thinking about doing a birdhouse and you want to include like a little area where they can drink water um, that can help them, you know, keep their energy up and keep flying. And here are some awareness public events. So the first one is Birds on Niagara. This will this will be an event that's held virtually or in person and it'll be taking place February 10th through 12th of this year. And then uh, by the World Migratory Bird Day, they will also be holding a virtual event on May 5th um, uh, at 7 p.m. And then the next one is Kachekma uh, Shorebird Festival. Again, it will be virtually or in person, and this will take place May 4th through May 8th. Okay, so our summary. Um, monitoring and conserving. Bird populations and their habitats support a wholesome environment for every living being, including human beings. Bird migration, they migrate from areas of low or decreasing resources to areas of high or increasing resources. The two primary resources being sought are food and nesting locations. So that's like the two main things that birds, um, when they're migrating, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for food or nesting in order to do breeding. And is bird watching important? Yes, of course it is important. It helps promote awareness to help conservation efforts. It also enriches wildlife habitat and public lands and support wildlife recreations. So is protecting and helping birds is not only the right thing to do, but it is also good for the future of our habitat. In addition, birds are invaluable as controllers of insect pests and also pollinators of crops. They also forge economic revenues through bird feeding and bird watching pastimes. Older adults can enjoy birding no matter what their level of mobility may be, and it is an activity growing in popularity each year 
because it allows to exercise indoors, whether that's on your backyard or your balcony and even outdoors. And you can reflect on the finer things that you set in a more peaceful state of mind. Okay, and here we have some resources. So that eBird Canada is a free program that allows you to keep track of all the birds that you find. And it provides an opportunity to contribute as a citizen scientist and is a great place to start exploring the world of birds around you. Another resource that we have here is the IV Canada interactive map. And this map allows you to find and zoom through a specific area to see how often birds migrated to that selected area. And the last one is the World Migratory Bird Day website. So this um, organization, they unite international representatives to boost the urgent need for migratory bird conservation by promoting the same event name an annual conservation theme and messaging. About 700 events and programs are hosted annually to introduce the public to migratory birds and ways to conserve them. This year, it will be uh, light pollution. And another resource that I wanted to share with you guys is called the iNaturalist app. And this is one of the world's most popular nature apps which, which helps you identify the plants and animals around you. You can get connected with a community of over 400,000 scientists and naturalists who can help you learn more about nature. So some of the key features about this app is you can discover species new to you both near and far from you. You can record your own observations and share them with the community. You can also discuss with community of members and help others identify what they've seen. And just a reminder, this is a free download for iOS and Android devices. Okay, and now we'll be moving into the live demo portion. So here is that app that I was just going over and I just wanted to show you guys a little bit more in depth about um, what's it, what it's it about, what you can do on it. So when you first download the app, this is what you'll see. And you can swipe and it gives you a little bit of an introduction to what you can do. First, you can observe, you can go outside and observe an individual organism, pick something wild and take a clear full frame photo of this. You can identify um, the iNaturalist app will automatically generate suggestions based on your photo and your location. And like I mentioned, you can discuss your observations with the community um, to confirm the findings that you did. And you can also contribute. So your observations may be vetted as research grade and shared with scientists working to better understand and protect nature. And then here you can log in um, or you can sign up now at the bottom, you have the little Apple icon or the Google or the Facebook. You can um, log in with any of these if you also have an account with them, or if you don't wanna log in, you can go ahead and, and click the little skip button at the bottom, which I'm gonna do. And then, yeah, so if you log in and you sign up, um, it'll ask to share your location with the app. So then you can see who in your community is also using the app. Um, so we go to explore. It'll take me to where I'm at right now. Um, activity. Here's some news that you guys can see, like um, observations that were found. And then if you want to click on observe, you can um, go directly to your camera to your photo library if you already took this photo and you want to now upload it or you can even record a sound um, and then me this i'm sure you'll have more um, in-depth information about yourself and then the sightings that you have will be listed here then if you go down to projects here are some projects that are um, near around you and you can click on any of these um, you can click on joined if you join a specific project featured or nearby. So like I mentioned, they're, um, they basically use your location to see what um, 
projects are going around near you. If, um, for example, you're trying to look for a specific one at the top where the search bar is, you can go ahead and click on that and then you can enter um, whatever the name is of the project. If we go back down to me, we can go to the settings. Here are more about your account settings. Um, they also have a help center, which, you know, it gives you a video tutorial. You can contact their support. You can give them a rating or you can even um, donate to the app. And then if I click on this little book at the top right, um, here are some guides based off of nearby your community, things that are going around. You can click on those. If you save the guides, you can also have them over here on this side where it says your guides. So yeah, I think this is a great app um, that people can use in order to um, observe your sightings, keep track of them, and then also share them with your community. Um, thank you again for listening. If you'd like to learn more about this lesson with our Cyber Seniors Mentor, you can go ahead and go on our website or you can call the number listed there in order um, to register for a one-on-one -on -one session with the mentor. And just to let you guys know, we also host weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays.